Okay, so with all the information that we've got about Iron Brew and how it works, let's actually try to apply some of that. So here we have a script, pen 42, and then the Iron Brew output. So you can go ahead, format that, and you can see uh, the code structure of Iron Brew. You have um, some functions up here, the decompression function, and then the decompress, the compress by code, which you can see is pretty small. Um, and then um, we decompress it, the XOR function, G bits, read certain numbers, string. Uh, there's the returns wrapper I call the var wrapper, the deserialized function. And so you can see, um, I've talked about in my um, hidden dumper video, you can see the hashtag, and then you can go here, here's a deserialized function. And then here's here's the constants um, function. Get this to go uh, here. There's the constants function. You can see our two constants match up, like how you'd expect from our input. And so then you can see, uh, you know, it does all the other um, serialized things. Then we have the um, the wrap function and then the loop. So we're just gonna go over just a demo of deobfuscating this file. And so you scroll to the bottom, look at whatever function this is, see it's i, which is just right above here. And then we can go to that inner function, scroll down to the while true do, and we're gonna add an injection here, where instead of running the actual loop, we're going to be doing our own stuff. So um, first off, I'm going to start by renaming stuff. So um, you can tell which one's the enum or the OP code um, variable because it's one that's being checked against in all of these checks here. So we can go ahead and rename that to OP code, which means that the L is the instruction, which I'll just call an INSN, which means that the is the instruction list, because that's where it gets the instruction from. And then O is PC or instruction pointer. And then if you go here at some of the bodies, you can see this E variable. Just go up here, it's this table that gets accessed like this, or it gets uh, written to like this. Um, it's a good indicator it's stack. And the only other one would be, in this case, T, which is the third um, argument to the wrap function. And also, if you look at what G is, it's gitfemv. That's so how you know that this is the um, environment, right? So it's pretty much all we need to do in, uh, in terms of renaming, right? And so then you can go in here. Um, I'm going to create a function here, a format, which takes a value. If it's a number, let's call it toString. Otherwise, format uh, with x, which will wrap strings in. Uh, quotes essentially. So then we'll do the exact same thing that this does. Instruction equals instruction list PC. OP code equals instruction one. And then I'll do this, which you can see it does down here. And then we're just going to um, look at each of these bodies and determine um, the like what OP code it is. And so you can see here, it's kind of easy to tell which one's zero, which one's two, which one's six. The other ones can be kind of tricky. So you can see uh, what number is less than or equal to three, less than or equal to one. So if the number is less than or equal to one, then it's going to be zero or one. They're not going to be negative in this case. So that means that this one's zero and this one's one. So I'm going to write that out. Then OP equals equals two is pretty simple. Um, then in this one, it's less than or equal to 3, which means that um, we've used 0, 1, and 2, so the only option left would be 3. Um, down here, less than or equal to 5, if it's bigger than 4, and less than or equal to 5, it has to be 5. Otherwise, it's 4 if it is um, less than or equal to 4 and less than or equal to 5. This one's pretty simple, 6. And then this one... Is just gonna we're just gonna add one to six and get set. And so you'll notice that there are lots of duplicates, and so they won't actually all be used like that. 
Um, let me go here and do if not because then I can show you what all the OP codes are um, for this specific script. And so you can see we're using one, four, five, and six. And so those are the only ones that we really need to write out. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna go in here. If OP code equals equal to one, then else if OP code equals equal to two. Also, no, sorry, not two. I need four. So five, I'll switch six. Okay, so we're gonna go through each. We're gonna see what number one is. Number one is this one, which does stack of instruction two, which is A equals environment of instruction three, which is B. So we'll pretty much just write that out. I'm gonna put it in the print. We'll go R instruction two equals and then instruction three. Now, if you run that, you can see first instruction R0 equals print. Then OP4 is this one right here, same as OP code 2. So we do R instruction 2 equals um, format instruction 3. So this is the um, it's the load K instruction here because I talked about in the slideshow that um, it does a check for if A, B, and C is constant, and then it just sets that directly in the instruction. This is instruction, this is the constant list. So that's how we know that this one is the load K. And so you can see right here, it does 42. Then OP code 5, um, the same as OP code 3, which is a call. You can tell it because of the you know parentheses here, and so we'll do instruction to call with r of two plus one, and then close that. And from there, we're pretty much done. All that's left is six, which is return. So you can print, turn, and boom. That's the script relatively deobfuscated. Um, this isn't the same code because I don't have the words local here. It's not a proper decompilation uh, because, you know, uh, from this point, the original source of the script is gone. All it is is compiled Lua. And so the only way to get it to source code would be to use a decompiler like Oracle or uh, MetaWorm. And so this is. Um, not the same code if you run it, but it gives you the exact idea of what it's doing. So that is how to um, deobfuscate a simple Ember script. Um, most scripts are going to have a lot more complicated uh, OP codes. And so I recommend that you just read the Baruby source, um, even the Fion source, as well as the Lua, Lua source code. Um, and you'll just, you should be able to figure out uh, what OP codes do. And from there, um, hopefully, you should be able to deobfuscate some more complicated scripts. I'm um, doing like this. Um, any questions that you have or any trouble you experience, let me know in the comments or in Discord at TechHog. And yeah.